Hi there. In this video, we are going to be talking about Premiere Productions and specifically about the use of projects that are outside of your production. Um, it's There's actually two different ways of working with projects that are not inside of your production yet. Uh, it is always possible to open up a standalone Premiere Pro project and work within it. Premiere will give you a little bit of a message to let you know that that's what you're doing. And just know that if you cut anything into an existing project, um, it's not gonna behave in the same way because that project, the source, the originating project, isn't part of the production yet. The other thing that you can do, and this is great in cases where you're reusing common elements over and over again, is you can always add a standalone project to the production, uh, and we'll showcase how that works as well. So to get started, um, I'm in my Carl Scratch project. I've got my selects and I've got a clip here. I want to try and find like maybe a music clip to go along with this. And I know that I have an existing project that I have worked on before here. So it's always possible to open up a standalone project by clicking on open project and then pointing at that project. Here's my loops project that I have here. I'll go ahead and click open. And you'll notice that this is actually just giving me a little bit of information here. All this is saying is that uh, this project's outside of the production. And what you need to be aware of is that means if I uh, load stuff from it in the source monitor and cut it into a sequence, it's going to put a copy of those clips next to the sequence in the same way that multiple projects would normally work. So I'll go ahead and click OK on this. And you can see here I've got a bunch of folders and subfolders with some different music cues that I might be wanting to use. Now, one way I might actually use this is I might already have a music project inside of Premiere, and I might want to add these clips to that music project. So in this case, I'm gonna move some things around on the screen here to give myself room to see both of these. And at this point, I might wanna take some of these folders and drag them and drop them over into my existing music project. That's a perfectly valid way of working. Um, if you're doing something like that, um, you know, I don't need to import this entire loops project into the production at this time, but I want to get a few elements. I'm going to move those elements into an existing project in the production, and then that way they'll stay organized in that project within the production. Just to showcase this, if I were to take one of these music cues and drag it and drop it onto this sequence, if I go back to that project, which was the Carl Scratch project, you'll notice that this clip is now in the Carl Scratch project. You may want that. In most cases, I don't think you would. And if I now try and delete this, it's going to warn me saying, hey, that's in your sequence. Are you sure you want to delete it? Um, if I needed to get that entire uh, loops project into my production, the way I would handle that is a little bit differently is instead of opening it up, and I'm going to go ahead and close it here. And this is another key point. I just want to call this out right now while we're talking about this. You'll notice that when I'm clicking on the name of the project, I'm going to this flyout menu. I'm using an option called close project. I'm not using close panel. Uh, this ensures that the project is actually closed, and that's what we want to make sure and do. Um, now, I want to add that project into my production, and I want to put it in the Audio Elements folder. So I'm going to select the Audio Elements folder, and I'm going to right-click on it and choose this menu option here, Add Project to Production. This does a number of nice things in the background. Even if this project is from like a really old copy of Premiere, uh, it will rev it for me. It will update this project to the latest and greatest version of Premiere, whatever I happen to be running. Um, so it matches all the rest of the, the uh, production. Um, it also assigns a unique identifying number to that. And that's one of the ways that the production panel kind of tracks where your clips live. And we'll get into what that means in a future video here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and choose Add Project to Production. I'll go to my desktop. There's my Loops project. And now I'll open that up. It's actually telling me it's going to make a copy of this. So the original project on the desktop is going to stay there. It's going to remain in place. It's not going to make any modifications or changes to it. But a copy of it is now going to be in the Productions folder. 
We'll go ahead and click OK. You can see it goes through. It just quickly shows me in the progress panel uh, that this is done. And now I have my Loops 2020 project. And now I can go in and use all of these within the production. And now that this Loops 2020 project is actually in the production, when I take a clip like this classic corporate piece here and I drag it and drop it into my sequence. When I go back to my Carl Scratch project, you'll see it didn't add that duplicate of the clip. It didn't add one to the uh, Scratch project. And when I right click on this and I say reveal in project, guess where it's going to go? To the loops project. And it's going to twirl down the corporate 30 uh, folder and it's going to highlight that clip for me. That's what I probably want to do. So hopefully this kind of clears up some uh, you know ideas of how you can use external projects to the production, um, how to import them correctly into the production panel or the production folder. Um, we always recommend using this right click add project to production. Um, in theory, you could do this on the operating system level by dragging something in on like, let's say the finder where you see the production folder. But again, it doesn't do all the nice things about just verifying that the project is, uh, it's current with the current copy of Premiere you're using. It also doesn't uh, uh, assign it a unique identifying number so that we'll be able to, to find things later on. So best practice, we always recommend using this right click function, add project to production. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe to see the rest of the videos in this series. My name's Carl Soule.